going live. Hey, hey there we are. <laughs> well, hey everybody, we've had a busy day today. Yeah, we, uh, we finished our show in the morning, which we want to tell you a little bit about. It's coming up on Thursday, and then uh, got some good sushi. Oh. It's always good to go to Umi Sushi. Yes. It's amazing. It was some great stuff. I hope you guys love sushi as much as we love sushi because yeah. we love sushi. But uh, yeah, so it was a, it's been a busy day. We did that and then we uh, we had to do a we had to do a reshoot on a video. On a video that we messed up uh -huh. on our focus. Can you believe that we messed up on our focus? On our video but, focus. Um, yep. And uh, we had our friend Jessica come over yep. to help us with that and Got to uh, shoot some photos of her yeah. also at the same time, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so we did kind of a headshot photo shoot with her and some of her new outfits, but great uh, great day so far. But a fun thing coming up is we got our next show. It's coming out this Thursday. So That's I don't know if you guys are – finished up? I don't know if you even know that we actually do a – we do a show almost weekly. Yeah, we used to do it <laughs> We used to. Our, our schedule's been a little different just because we've had a bunch of projects going on lately. But, uh, yeah, so we, we've got this show, and we're coming up – into May. Is today first day of May? Today is May 1st. May 1st. Okay. Yeah. So we're here in May. It's not May Day, right? When's May Day? Actual? May 1st, isn't it? Is May Day. I don't know. Hey, out there is, is May Day, May 1st. Cinco de Mayo is coming. So <laughs> I know that. But yeah, so we start to get pretty slammed. It's wedding season right, yeah. coming up. And so, so yep. Our next few our next few shows are going to be about wedding photography. And some people go, oh, no, I'm not a wedding photographer. Yeah. But it's going to be good information for any kind of portrait work. Yeah, I don't think you need to be a wedding photographer, even an no. aspiring wedding photographer, to to like it. But yeah, we're coming up with some really good info. We also have some photo news on that one. There's been yeah. some big, big news lately that yeah. you're going to want to catch things going on our on. show coming up on Thursday. So um, we just put out yesterday a video on the Sue Ray tripod. If you haven't seen that yeah, yet, catch that video. We played around with the tripod for about a month and uh, super impressive. Yeah, the tripod is super, super impressive. Whenever we do a review and you tell and you find us saying that we like something, which we seem to like lots of stuff, but uh, so we like toys. That's what it yeah. is. We really do like it. They're not yeah. they're not paying us to you know. They sent us a tripod out to use so just to test, and we're gonna yeah, send it back to them. And but uh, man, it was good stuff. I wish we didn't have to send it back. I know. Hey, Sue Ray, if you're listening, don't make us send it back. Yeah. <laughs> we really liked it. Well, we're letting, I was going to say you're letting the cat out of the bag, but they just have to watch the video and find out that we, we really did. We, we really, really, yeah, really like this tripod. And, and you know, you just can't like get, our spider holsters. We really, 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 really like our spider. Holsters. When, when we first were, you know, thinking, okay, we're going to do this review on a tripod, which we didn't know it can go either way. Right. Good, good tripod or a bad tripod. We didn't yep. really know which way it's going to go, but <clears throat> we're like, how do you actually review a tripod? I mean, that's, yeah. What do you say? Yeah, it's good. Held my camera. But no, we found a lot, bunch of good stuff on this tripod that's different from others. Yep. And it seems like every every video we would watch on reviews, it's always, this is the Jodas air blower, and I'm going to review it today. And it's how did I take it out of the box? And you squeeze it, you know, so like, what can you do with a tripod? We went out and just used it. We used it. So, And, and you know what the funny thing is, is that, Neither one of us are really big tripod users, right? I mean, that's just not other than doing land when well, yeah, occasionally doing landscape stuff. But we, we but found in the last month that we've been testing it, we used it quite a bit. And yeah. you know, I took it all the way back to the east coast um for a trip that Let's I just see. went out there. I put it where did I put the big tripod? Oh right here behind me. So it's like for my landscape stuff, I love Jodas, but my goodness, this thing it's big. I've been working with the other with the the Sue Ray, that Sue Ray has got to weigh a third or a quarter of what that, and that thing weighs. A carbon, a carbon, a carbon this fiber. This is carbon tripod. fiber as well. But you know, there's a lot of like cast or something that they, you know, it's a beefy tripod. Yeah. It, it, but that Sue Ray is just rock solid. I, I was really no, I pleasantly was surprised. Totally impressed with it. So watch the video. It's uh, it's the latest video we just put out, and uh, hopefully you'll be pleasantly entertained. But but if you are in the market for a tripod, and all of us are always in a market for new gear, I mean, we love all of us photographers. You, yes, you out there, <laughs> love gear. Um, if you're looking for a tripod, check hey, out this company. Andy. So, I think we're. Uh, hey, Andy, how are you? I think we're always looking for new gear, mm -hmm. right? And we love the new toys, like we've been saying. But um, we're we are like Manfrotto. I know you have your Gitzo there, but 
a lot of our gear is Manfrotto. We've got a couple different Manfrotto tripods too. Yep. I think I'm, I'm my loyalty may be switched after yeah. this month for. And if you're a monopod, that's how we actually got involved with Sure. I mean, not involved with them, but that's the reason we went and talked to them at the last show was the fact that I use a Sure monopod yeah. for video work, and it is just the greatest. They always hate, they cringe when you say this, but what I like about it, I can put my Sony A7 on there and walk away. It'll stand up by yeah, itself. It, the feet, you know, are like they this definitely, long they on definitely the thing. cringe when uh, you said that, so. Yeah. It's Paul not, went, it, don't tell people no, that. Don't, don't tell them that. Don't That's not what that. it's made for. But yeah, it, it's. it's By doing always, interviews, it's it's so easy to walk away from. Yep. But this tripod converts to a monopod and does some some really cool stuff. And I think the biggest thing that you found, you shoot down by your river a lot. Mm -hmm. This thing you can put right in the water. Yeah, the legs are waterproof. Water can't get up inside the legs. And that is awesome when you get out of the river and you throw it back in your car or in the trunk. You don't get back home and go, where does this puddle come from? Yeah. Yep. Or tip it and it runs all down the front so of you. At this point, you guys are probably pretty bored of hearing us babble about tripods. But yeah. That that's proof positive that it's worth watching because it was a good that's right good tripod. But we like to just go live once in a while and kind of update you on what's going on. We did a workshop this weekend in oh, San Francisco. Yeah, that was it was our advanced one. lighting course, and uh, we made people's brains fry. That's it was right. so much fun. It was great because we actually did it to ourselves the week before. We, we kind of had an idea what we wanted, how we want to teach it, and we went, "Let's yeah, go we, we try tried it. something new." We, you know, some of our teaching is very just straightforward teaching, but this time we actually made it kind of fun and, and probably That's a right. lot more difficult for our attendees. Yeah. And it was great because our attendees this time were all people that have gone through our regular lighting class yep. and a few a couple of times. They've gone to a lot of workshops. But this time we drew names and one at a time they had to get the model with everybody watching and they had to talk out loud and say they set up the shot. This is where I want to shoot. This is process. why I want to shoot here. You know, we gave him some some coaching ahead of time, and we talked about you're looking for something that we called a gift within the location. We talked about what those things could be, whether it was a background that was a solid color, or a texture, or a repetitive pattern. You know, find your gift, get your person there, mm -hmm. then build the lighting. And we didn't let anybody off the hook. It wasn't, oh, that's good. It yep. was, uh, don't you think you could move it and make it better? Yeah. And it was really fun giving them a choice. We, we gave them a choice of four different modifiers to use um, and just seeing what uh, what they came up with. But you Yeah, know, Rob, we, and it was those pictures. They're, they're doing a great job, the people posting Yeah, and photos. you'll see more and more pictures up on our Facebook stuff, of uh, the group's pictures, but they did a great job. Um, and Andrew. Andrew went out and did an old shipwreck. Ooh, I'm jealous. I like shipwrecks. Yep. We have a couple of real famous – they're not ships. They're boats, boats. around they're here. Last year – uh, somebody was spinning fire thinking it would be really with neat the steel wool, with the steel wool and they caught it on fire and burned the whole backside of this. They were iconic. very unhappy photographers. Yeah. And then there's one up. I always try to get in gold beach, Oregon, and there's not going to be much long. Hey, hey Marcus. How are you? Yeah. But, so this workshop, when we gave them the choice, of these four modifiers, they each had to pick it, but here's the cool part. We had each one from the group actually doing self, not self critiques, but critiquing the other members of the group in yes. a very, friendly competition way and it was such a huge help to all these people to actually hear their peers say no try this okay yeah. move forward and you know what the pictures from the beginning of the workshop to the end of the day Not oh man yeah. it was so different because everybody was thinking different and including yeah. us and then um, each person during their turn stuff. we watched them go from eh, pictures okay to that's a work of art. Yeah, we we had uh, we talked about moving from knowing the the language basically just yeah to creating complete sentences to um, equating equating photography with uh, English or language. Just the idea, yeah, of like moving when you to all the way to poetry. Yep, and you we first had, learn, you learn what all the words. I think I think everybody at the class just trying to think through all the pictures I see, I've seen. Everybody from the class got really close, if not nailing a piece of poetry. Yeah. Right. Not every shot was a piece of poetry, but there's some shots like just like Robin said um, that were so impressive. Yeah. Like we had one guy, Mike, that took a shot like right from the back of the camera and both Mark and I go, oh, man, I wish that was my shot. Like it was it was that good. It was really, really good. So. Yep. Uh, and then hopefully we're going to do a uh, some date some night this week. We're going to do a little follow up with everybody and, and do a critique online. 
And we're talking about possibly doing that live where you guys could maybe chime yeah. in and watch it. Let's see how it goes. And we'll, we'll just kind of working out the logistics of that and maybe do a little Photoshop. The other and, thing, I don't know what we want to talk about is we, we are kind of planning. It's probably in the 90% stage, but doing a photo walk. On the twelfth, on the twelfth, which, which is, is less than two weeks, two weeks away, Saturday, up in northern, far northern California, up in Redding, yes, area. So, kind of uh, branching out from the Sacramento area. But if you are going to be around in northern California, anywhere in Sacramento, north, it's easy to get there. Um, we're going to be doing a photo walk and possibly a different adventure in the evening. Mm -hmm. So. But I don't think Andrew hey. is going to be able to make it from England because isn't that the royal wedding? Ah, yes. And I don't know that he's going to want to leave. Steven Styles, oh, greetings Steven. from Sacramento. Hey, you know what? We're sitting here in Roseville, California, so we're not too far. <laughs> exactly. Not far away. But uh, yeah, so. So yeah, we're, we're looking at doing one up closer to my house, so maybe towards Reading. Yep. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. Um, you know, the, the first part, the photo walk, our photo walks that we try to do once a quarter um, generally are going to be just more. Hey, Mike. Um, Oh, Marcus, you can come from Germany. That's no problem. <laughs> but uh, the photo walks are generally just a, a time that everybody gets together. They're really inexpensive. They're usually like $30 or less. Yeah. Uh, but we we have those and um, just time for everybody to kind of network and have fun. And we yeah, just and geek out on cameras talk and about pictures. Cameras and and, pictures yeah, we bring cool some stuff. models out and just play. And, and I'm not, I'm not going to say what we're doing after the photo walk, but there's going to be a select group. And we're not going to select them. They're going to self-select. But... Um, they're going to get to do something probably extra special. Yes. Tonight, so, yep. So we're going to look into that and figure that all out. Yep. So keep your eyes out for that. We do have a workshop. We don't have a date set coming up and we're really excited about what we're putting together for this. Yeah, and that workshop going awesome. is going to be photographs that sell. So what kind of photographs sell senior portraits, engagements, brides, family, you know, family sports. pictures, those sports. Those so all those ones that, is our the, our bread and butter and we're going to go through some ideas of how do you take pictures that sell how do you get those jobs and uh, we'll work through these different genres and it'll be an all-day workshop so we're just trying to we got a spot to do it we're just trying to pick the right date the problem right now is we got graduations yes, and all kinds of things good. until summer hits into full swing and then the chopsticks guys have you guys started on Creative Live yet? Not yet, but we have. No, uh, but we've been talking to our friend uh, John Cornicello up there. You guys and, probably know uh, John. John uh, is the guy that's seen in the background all the time that has the uh, the do-rag and the beard. Yep. One of our great friends. Always fixing stuff. And uh, just love John. Yeah. But, I, yeah, he's. That he's, guy, is uh, a, he's just a magician. And hopefully he's going to pull some magic and wind up on Creative Live soon. That's right. We're trying to work on some things there. So lots of stuff going on. Uh, we go to camp again this year. Yeah, yeah chops you guys go to camp. If you followed us last year, so uh, my brother's brother-in-law runs a camp, and, and for the last few years I've been going up there videoing, and last year Steve and I went up there and not only videoed but did photographs. We had so much fun. <laughs> they didn't like, ask us to come back. We asked if we could come back. It's too little. Hey, Marco We're like two Portugal. little kids at camp. Because we get to have just as much fun as the campers do, and we just have a ball with these kids. So, it, you know, it's junior high and high school, four weeks of camp. Yeah. Does that sound like fun? Four weeks with junior hires? Junior hires and one yeah, week of high school. So, you know. Um, it's fun, though. It's a blast. We, yeah. So, you know what came from Portugal? Uh, Marco. Yeah, Marco. But the ukulele originated yes, from I did Portugal. Know that. Everybody yeah. thinks it's a Hawaiian instrument, but it's actually But it's you know the Portuguese came to Hawaii and brought it there and they kind of said, oh, we're gonna call it our own ukulele. Yeah. They call it something else in Portugal. Marcos probably Marcos, Marcos probably what do they call it in Portugal? The ukulele. Marcos? Hey Marcos. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Marcos guys, is searching the Google machine. Yeah. No, so we have been uh, Steve was gone last week. His daughter was playing at Kennedy Center in yes. Washington, D.C., the French horn. And so it was a once in a lifetime. And yeah, so, so I was back there and uh, we, we had fun back there. We I, I brought the tripod with me. I also brought a Fuji HX1. Yeah. Which is the new, uh, not full frame, but the new Fuji kind of powerhouse top of the line. It's an amazing camera because it's, it's stabilized in camera. Five axis stabilization in body. Yeah, 24 megapixels has the best hands down 
the best electronic viewfinder I've ever used. So good. So I, you know, I shoot with Fuji. I have one of their other X, X uh, series cameras, but this Fuji, the grip was a lot deeper. Remember when you, yeah. you were holding it? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's deeper. The thing with that though, it's pluses and minuses. The, the plus side is it's way more comfortable to hold. The big minus size is it makes it a lot bigger. Yeah. And that's, that's bad for a mirrorless camera in yeah. a way. Not that I minded carrying it around, but you just you just, lost the size. I just lost all the size benefit of a mirrorless yeah. camera. So files, fantastic. Yeah. So we have a friend, Scott Johnson. He's from X Essex, England. Mm -hmm. He's a photographer there, and he's a, a pro with Fuji. He came out and shot with us at Nelson, Nevada. And I remember you had asked him, you know, what are those files like in that thing? And he said, it's a lot like the medium format. You got to do the accent, though. No, I can't do the accent because it'll just sound like, like it'll sound like the Lucky Charms guy. <laughs> my my accents always end up with they're always after me, Lucky Charms. <laughs> doesn't matter if you're Indian doesn't or, matter. Yeah, or what Chinese? They're always going to be. It's Irish. just always going to be Irish. So, uh, yes, I do. The reason why, Mike, is that Mike asked, "Do you like in body stabilization more than the lens?" because I was using a 16 to 55 lens, which is equivalent to a 70 to 200, or excuse me, a 24 to 70 in a full frame, um, unstabilized. And so I had the benefit of full stabilization. stabilization in the body. It also, when I shot video with it, it means that my video is fully stabilized. Yeah. So stabilizing on the sensor is a good thing. Yeah, and for the video guys, they're just going crazy over this in-body stabilization. You know, Olympus has that as well. Oh, Robin, how did the battery hold up? Just like a Fuji. That's not a good thing. So, and it, it, it was a, you didn't get as many shots yeah. out of that thing. Huh? I mean, it, that's the problem with every mirrorless camera, except for the A, Sony A3, A, R, A3, whatever. The brand new one. The brand new one. It's a, they have so many A, A3 models. Yeah. The, the A, the R, 7 III. Yeah, A7 III. A7 III. Whatever it is. Yeah. But anyways, that one has just a great battery in it. This thing, I was getting about 260 shots. Okay. Mm. That's not great. No. But you can handhold it at like a second. Yes, I did. <laughs> Which was, blew me away. Like having, you know, Mike, you're asking about the, the in-body stabilization. In stabilization. I was able to handhold taking pictures at one second. Yeah. So it's not the, – the answer is never like, uh, you know, oh, this is going to replace it for our commercial work. But for a travel camera to have that in-camera stabilization and be able to handhold like that, you think of all the places you're going, you know, on, on a trip to be able to walk into a museum and pull that out and shoot at a half a second and it to be nice and sharp. Incredible. So, I, you know, with, with the, the Fuji, three years ago I borrowed a Fuji camera to take on a trip back east again. I, I rented it actually. Mm -hmm. And when I got home, I bought one. It made that much difference. Yeah, like, exactly. I love yeah. the synchro vacation. So this camera that I, I borrowed this time, like I didn't come home and buy one. <laughs> you kind of went. Like, it's like, I love that camera. It's cool. It's not gonna replace your other one. But it's not gonna replace my other one. Yeah. And Steven asked about what's our thoughts of mirrorless with Nikon. Did you know this week, Nikon actually came out like the head of Nikon came out and said by spring of next year we'll have a mirrorless DSLR. Mm -hmm. So I mean Nikon is a hundred percent having that they're committed, to and it. they said maybe even a little bit earlier, but they're they're shooting right now. They're saying spring. Yeah, spring uh, nineteen. The the thing with that is bad in the case of Nikon. Well, the same thing I think of the Canon <laughs> side lenses. Right, you will not be able to use any Nikon lens. Yeah. See, and that's the problem. Everybody thinks it's just just make a mirrorless, but the problem, yeah, is, is Nikon. They're one of the most involved companies as far as process of making the lens. You know, what did you say? Two years or something mm -hmm. from start to finish. So it's you know, it's not necessarily it's going to take two years to come with the lens, but you know, from the time they make the blanks and move it mm -hmm. around, so you can't just put a lens. On no, one because, problem, because it has the, to do with the distance, the distance between, between the lens mount and the sensor. Yeah, in a mirrorless is much closer, and so the focal fractal range yeah. is different, 
and it won't work. So that's yeah. the problem. Light has to bend around and hit it just yeah. right, and you'll end up with a little tiny picture or something. Yeah. So it has to be set back more. And so you won't be able to use any of your Nikon. And people say, well, maybe they'll have an adapter. Maybe, maybe not. But I hate adapters to begin with. So yeah, exactly. We'll see. There's times, you know, maybe traveling. You don't mind an adapter, but you're doing commercial work. Yeah. You don't want to shoot with an adapter. Yeah, if, if that's if there's still a camera company, <laughs> I agree with you. You know, we're Nikon guys, but yeah, we're both I, Nikon you don't, you don't, you know, Nowadays, you don't know. I mean, things change fast. Just like some of the news that we're going to share with you on our show coming up on Thursday, um, stuff changes fast. Stuff we want to talk about right now, <laughs> but, but I'm not going. I'm so not going. But it'll it, be out Thursday. Changes quick. Um, yeah, Andrew, I'm a D810 user as well. So in fact. Is that right now? It's a 750 sitting on the yeah. tripod. But so I have a question, and I won't. I won't go any wrong direction. I just wonder why you're blowing me with the rocket, with rocket launcher. <laughs> is uh, if any of you are using Luminar? That's a good question. We just started playing around with Luminar. That's that Skyloom software, and I've uh, been playing with it. Nope. Oh, Robin, you sold your 810 to buy some Fuji glass. Robin's an all Fuji man now. All in. All in. And Fuji. that's you know what? It's funny you know I. Who cares? No, I mean, it's not like, oh, who, <laughs> yeah, who cares, cares Robin? Robin? Yeah, no, I mean, cares? it used to be That's like, nice. why would you sell your stuff and get away from, you know what? Because they're all good now. They're all good, like the Fuji glasses. You're not going to have, it, there is no more of this, you know. Why, why'd you do that? Why'd you and switch I've to, seen Robin's pictures, yeah. and they're stellar, so. That's what I said. It, it, they're so great. You know, no Lightroom, Photoshop, and Canon. Yeah, but the Luminar, we've been playing with it this week. And I played with it a few weeks ago, and uh, we talked with them this week, and we've got finally some keys to unlock it. And so now we're playing around with it, and hopefully we'll give a review of it soon. But Yeah, there, uh, there's some things that I – and I don't want to talk too much about it. We actually talked about it on the show some, but there's some things I really, really like about it. There's yeah. some questions I have about it too that yeah. we keep – And mine really just gets a workflow. We don't talk about it in our show, but it's it's – I've yet to find – a solid workflow for myself. Yep. So that's what would keep me from moving into Luminar. But there's other things that, yeah, definitely. Mark, there are no stuff. bad guys that are chopstick fans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's a Lightroom guy, and and I'm a Photoshop guy. So I would play more of a bridge guy than I'm. I mean, you're a Photoshop guy. You taught Photoshop. It's all Photoshop, years, but, but it's just you just don't like bridge. Or don't use I just it don't or, see a need for it. That's all. But we're not going to go down that debate right now. Just that's like our most heated argument is. We, we sit there for hours. And of you know just what? debate. Our, our, wives, like, uh, our wives look at us like we're all together and we'll be going, well, I don't know why you're using Bridge. And I don't know why you're using yeah. Photoshop and, and Lightroom. And like, you know, it's like we sound like yeah. two little babies whining and stuff. That's right. Just like you said, it's all good stuff. It was just like, like you know, easier. hearing on the news today, General Kelly saying, you know, them saying General Kelly's calling Trump an idiot. And the, well, we're calling each other idiots behind closed doors, too. So the time that, that's just because he uses Lightroom's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what, what is Bridge? What's Bridge? Lightroom. Yeah, no, no, Lightroom is, but no, Lightroom is ripped is, off from Bridge. No, what sorry. was their first? The other way. They made Bridge first. Oh, see. And then they were like, Thanks, Marcus. Look some of these, Marcus, they're like, what you did. some of these, some of these photographers are just, they just can't follow along. So we need to make a product called Lightroom. It's that's really simple for simple people. <laughs> capture one, <laughs> capture one. You uh, know, I, I do want to play Mike with capture one. We talked to them at a show this year and uh, it was funny. He, what did he say to us? He said, guys, do me a favor, get the trial version and just play with your raw files just do that. Just and see what they look like. He was like, that's all I want to tell you. Just play with, play with the raw part of it and just make your own decisions from there. So I would like to see it because I know that there's a lot of people that I um, hold in high regard as photographers that use it. I just haven't found a good workflow for a lot of these other things. That's the problem. Like I yeah. really like alien skin actually <laughs> exposure yep. to X2 by alien skin. I think it's a really good product. It renders files really well. But the workflow just slows me down. Yeah. And there's almost too many, like, the preset type stuff that, you know, I get kind of. Yeah, so speaking of workflow, so we shot headshots, what, Friday night with with someone, an aspiring actress. Yeah. And uh, our, we're going to shoot some headshots turned into a three and a half hours oh, of. Goodness. But it, it was <laughs> fun. We enjoyed it, and she was pleasant and all of those things. Oh, it was a great time. But the it funny part was, we're talking about workflow is, you know, it ends up you going, 
they got to call down 400 and something headshots, you know, and we each had, you know, I had a 300 and you had 400. It's yeah, like, every, every headshot photo shoot should be 800 pictures. <laughs> That's just what the client needs is 800 shots. Yeah. Of their head. So she didn't get 800 shots, but it's just, you know, all the calling so and all had the work, to go through them. we had to go through them, you know, so, uh, well, Stephen, yeah. you know, since you're, uh, you know, you're, you're a local boy, you should do sushi with us one day. That's right. right? We joined the debate. That's we right. we actually went there today, and uh, and we were pleasant. We what you don't <laughs> what you don't know about me is so, because Steve lives here in Sacramento, and I and I come down usually on Tuesdays from Reading, which is about a almost three hour drive to your house. I forget stuff all the time. So this morning when I got everything. here. We, well, we went to go to sushi and we went, oh, let's oh, go do a little, grab, grab all the cameras. Let's do a little debate over sushi. And then you said, so you got your little Sony camera. And I opened up one bag. It wasn't there. Opened up another bag. If my wife's watching, she'll tell me that it's sitting right on my desk, okay. right where I left it. But, but here's the crazy part. Time and place and he'll be there. I kept making fun of you about this, right? Guess you didn't charge the other cameras' batteries. Yeah, yeah. So we had no cameras to use for a debate. <laughs> but actually, it was kind of pleasant because we didn't debate this time. I don't think we actually debated about anything over sushi, other than no. This is pretty doggone good. Yep. I like. I was gonna like lick the plate today. It was that good. Yeah. There's times when, oh, how many headshots you normally give a client? Uh, there is no normal. This was different because yeah, this was. Th because uh, this is somebody we've been working with that's really trying to break into some acting stuff. And, uh, yeah, like Steve was saying, five, yeah. A lot of times, if you're just doing headshots, yeah, you, it, it's going to be under 10. I mean, it's going to be very few. You give too many. It's it too confusing for the client. To yeah. Many. So this one we did a lot, and we gave her a lot of images, but it really had to do with uh, – we wanted her to see herself in the bad, not the bad pictures, but the bad poses. Hey, it's my mom. Howdy. Yeah, howdy. We wanted her to see what, how she could in, improve herself. So it wasn't a matter of that. But, you know, you just kind of get into it. and See, with this case, it was, you went from a, what we thought was just going to be a headshot shoot to a full body, like different styled yeah. outfit shoot. Yeah, which is not what we were actually set up for even. So it made it, made it more difficult, but it was it, it actually wasn't bad because it was a good learning process for us as well mm -hmm. of having it turn into that. But So this is one thing that we were going to bring up. I was going to bring up on a topic for our show, but I don't think we ever will. It's just kind of this one of those talking things of I love Pinterest. We use Pinterest a lot, you know, to create, you know, to just store ideas. But Pinterest is kind of dangerous sometimes for a client. It's okay if somebody says, I don't really know what I want. Can you do these types of photos? It's great when they just show you. But like weddings, I have a lot of people that are like, oh, it's wonderful. You have your bride. I don't like my bride just to have a Pinterest board. Just, I don't like my bride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope yeah. she's not watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here's why. It, it's like I don't mind that they give some ideas. But what happens is they bring their phone and they're like, okay, can you shoot this picture now? And then when you're all done, after you're worn out, you've been shooting for an hour and a half, they go, oh, can we do this one too? Oh, now can we do this one? Oh, and just one of these of our feet and one of our – and you're going, oh, my goodness. And, and then, you got to keep them the happy. They go, oh, I don't like my smile on that. It's got to be more like this. Yeah. And then they go, it's got to be more like this. So that's the danger of Pinterest. And then they go, it's going to be like this. And you realize you know? it's the same smile the whole yeah. time. It's wonderful to, like, get ideas for stylization. But, man, it, it's – I shot senior portraits last week, two different sessions, and they pulled out pictures when we were all done and said, can you do one of these now? No. Yeah, and you do want to go like, no. No. you got to be like Mr. Fredrickson in the movie Up. No. Nope. You know, wait, when the, uh, what's his face, the, the little kid says, Mr. Fredrickson, can I help you across the street? No. <laughs> can I sweep your porch? No. <laughs> can I mow your lawn? No. <laughs> That's what you got to sound like. Yeah. I met Mr. Fredrickson. No, I did. He's a nice man. So, anyways, I think we're running out of we're we're, we're never going to run out of things to talk about. But uh, I think those were some of the things my sister did along. Did that to you for a prom shoot? Yeah, it always happens. Oh yeah, for prom shoot last week. Yeah, but so they just what? keep showing. It, it's helpful, but it gets out of control sometimes. It can. The thing is, 
I use Pinterest though all the time. That's my cheat sheet. I'll set up for a, a shoot. I was going to see how to phrase this, but it's not a bad thing for photographers to do that, right? I think a lot of photographers come across so cold. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do any more than we're contracted yeah. for, yeah. right? And I want to always over deliver on yep. every single job that I do, every single job we do together. Yep. I want to over deliver for the client. I want to make sure that I am their photographer mm -hmm. for life, right? And I love trying things that are out of my wheelhouse. I like when somebody goes, can you do this? And, uh, you know, we've shot the stuff how I want to do it and how I think it needs to be done. And it's like, now yeah, let's play. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it goes right back to, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the millennial style. And, uh, you know, we've been watching, not a lot, but, you know, that Gary Vandercheck says a lot of stuff about, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people are complaining about, oh, cell phones and nobody talks to each other anymore. And yeah, that's true. But you know what? You can't just go, I don't like things. I'm not going to use it, you know, because your life gets kind of confusing. Yep. Andrew, sleep well. It's uh, 1230 a.m. in yeah, the U.K. Go so to sleep. Go to sleep. Stop <laughs> listening to us. But anywho. Here, we'll sing to you. Well, we've, Cheers, we've, uh, we've taken out 30 minutes of these people's day. Okay. And uh, you got to trek home. Yeah, I got to get in the car and go home. Bye. So, get out of here. Leave. What time is it? It's Four o'clock? Uh, five, six, seven? I'll be home by eight o'clock. It'll be nice. <laughs> nice. Really, really nice. Kids will be in bed. Really no, it'll be right. At, I get to just be there just in time. Just then you got to go eight. edit down a show and a couple of small bites and all kinds of good stuff. So, uh, Any tips on using the S1 with a boom arm? <laughs> get a boom arm that works <laughs> i almost said any more than that but um yeah we do it yep it works you need one hopefully we'll have an answer for you enrico we're working on one. Oh, okay them right <laughs> no i we have a we, we've been playing around with a, a really cool boom arm really but cool boom uh, arm. we had a little mishap with it so that's why I was, that's we're, why i was laughing that's what we're laughing so it's more of we we don't know if it's us or the boom arm so um, we're, we're, we're impressed and not impressed and we're, I'm we're, more impressed than not impressed. Correct. He just had an issue. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. And as soon as we figure it out, we'll let you know. So. But, uh, yeah, the, one of the problems with boom arms, I think that's probably why you're asking is those things always bend. Mm -hmm. It's not the arm that bends. The head turns on the end of it. And this, this one, the way it's designed doesn't should turn. not happen. Yeah. In fact, it can't happen. It's just a set but, screw had fallen out. Yeah. And so when we were out on location, it became useless to us. So we thought it was going to be the answer, but you know, that gets to that point of totally understand, you know, I'm the biggest cheapskate in the world. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that yep. you go, I don't do this a lot and I can't afford to, I don't want to spend money on it. Like a good boom arm. It's worth a good to spend the money for things like that. If that's your style of shooting like Ernesto, if you're doing uh, Enrico, sorry, we know Ernesto. He's the one that threw his camera in the water. <laughs> Not on purpose. Not on purpose. He just fell in the lake, Ernesto did. But <laughs> Enrico, uh, just, just random thoughts with place. the chopstick, guys. Um, well, you don't even know what you're talking about. You know, it, like it, if you're a guy who loves shooting with the beauty dish and you like that, it's got to be overhead and straight over you, spend the money and get a really good boom arm because mm -hmm. you just won't have to fight it. Yep. So, but again, hopefully this is going to be the right answer. And uh, yeah, good, good. Well, that was. I'm gonna get in my car and go home. Three minutes ago, you go home. Okay. So well, thanks, everybody. We appreciate. Just you, wanted uh, to catch up. Hanging out with us for the last thirty-three and a half minutes, but yeah. uh, make sure you you uh, keep your eyes and ears open on Thursday for the brand new show. Even if you're not a wedding photographer. Photographer. I can't, I can't talk, man. A wedding photographer. You know, it's the end of the day. A wedding photographer. <laughs> you'll enjoy the show. So. Hey, thanks everybody. All right. Until next time, don't forget. Say, Say sushi. sushi. All right, everybody. See you next time. Adios.